The 2020 11-inch iPad Pro is still pretty much my main computer. I pretty much use my iPad Pro for work, school, entertainment. And because of iPadOS, I can pretty much use this as my main daily computer. Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. For the longest time, the iPad Pro has been pretty much my main computer. So in this video, we're making it my main computer. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, the best place to learn all the creative skills you've always wanted to learn. The first 1,000 people who join with my link in the description get a two-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Explore your creativity today. Okay, so pretty much my main computer. What does that mean exactly? Well, I already use the iPad Pro for plenty of my daily work. I use the iPad for typing notes for video concepts, planning shots, drawing thumbnail concepts, editing some photos, and even as a second display for my camera. I use the iPad for school, note-taking, sketching, typing essays, research, and making presentations. I use the iPad for fun and entertainment, watching videos, streaming music, playing some games, making some background tracks for videos, and the list goes on and on and on. But the one thing I actually don't use the iPad for is this making and editing videos, thumbnails, and uploading to YouTube. Pretty much my main form of work, making YouTube videos, is the one thing the iPad isn't used for in my daily life. So why don't we try doing it? Okay, so there's kind of a bit of an inception thing going on right now, but basically this whole video and the thumbnail were edited completely on the iPad Pro. So I'm shooting this whole video, the A-roll and B-roll, on my Canon 90D, and the audio is being recorded with the Sennheiser MKH416 onto a Zoom H4n with an SD card. Once I'm usually done shooting all the clips for a video, I'll take out the SD cards and import them onto my computer, but this time we're going with the iPad for importing. So I'll get a USB-C to SD card adapter and import the video clips into my Photos app, and the audio clips are imported into my Files app. From here, I'll open up LumaFusion, the closest video editor to Final Cut Pro on the Mac. Then, I'll create a new project and import all the clips in. Now here's where kind of a small issue with LumaFusion pops up, and one of the limitations of the software. Unlike Final Cut Pro, which lets me actually sync my audio and video with one button, here I have to do it all manually. Thankfully, I did do a clap sync before actually recording all my talking head portions, so it's fairly easy to sync up in post, but it's just one extra step. Then to make the rest of the editing a bit of a better experience, I plugged in a monitor directly into the iPad with a USB-C cable, and LumaFusion uses the external display as a large preview window so I can see exactly what I'm editing on a bigger screen. And as much as I love this magic keyboard case, a more traditional mouse makes the editing process a bit easier instead of a trackpad. This is the MX Master Apple Edition. Actually cutting through the A-roll and B-roll footage and the voiceover you're listening to is pretty easy. The splitting tools are simple and throughout this editing, the iPad isn't breaking a sweat. As I mentioned, this is full 4K video, high quality audio files, and quite a few clips overall. Playback is buttery smooth, and the iPad is just killing it with this editing. On my almost fully specced 16-inch 2019 MacBook Pro, that computer struggles sometimes in actually editing videos like this one. Here in the 2020 11-inch iPad Pro, I'm having no issues. One issue, though, is storage. On my Mac, I have two terabytes of storage, so I never really have to worry about running out of space. On the iPad, the maximum is one terabyte, and I went with the cheapest amount of storage, 128 gigabytes. And that's something that definitely depletes fast when actually editing 4K videos, so I have to keep an eye on that. Okay, so I have pretty much all my main clips laid out in a fairly loose 60-70% to 70 complete timeline here. It's pretty organized, but definitely not done yet. But we're gonna take a little bit of a break from editing. We're gonna work on this video's thumbnail for a little bit. I want a clean and minimal thumbnail that obviously looks great, but also encompasses the overall subject of this video, the iPad Pro. So I'll open up Procreate and sketch a very rough, albeit awful looking sketch of what I have in mind, but it's just a very rough guide. Then I'll grab the iPad, head back to my DSLR, kind of arrange the shot, make it look good, and take a few different angles of the overall thumbnail. And once I'm happy with a few options, I'll import those photos onto the iPad Pro. 
Now, these are actually raw photos, and the iPad can edit those photos in Lightroom, so I'll import them directly into there. I'm making a few quick edits with the curves, overall colors, shadows, and highlights before exporting the final image back into my Photos app. From here, Affinity Photo is the better Photoshop for iPad than Photoshop for iPad, if you know what I mean. It's full of features, easy to use, and well optimized for the iPad experience. I'll create a mask and play with some of the color tones for the background of the thumbnail, and then add in a screen overlay so the display stands out and doesn't look all awful and muted. Now I tend to use custom fonts for my thumbnails, so I got an app called Fontcase, downloaded the fonts I want from Google as TTF or OTF files, imported them into Fontcase, installed a simple profile onto the iPad, and that's it. I'm now able to use third-party fonts in the process of this thumbnail, and if I want to use them throughout my video, I can do that too. Okay, back to the video edit. So here I'll just make the final necessary tweaks, add in titles where I want them, make sure all the clips are properly in place, and then add in the background music. So I use a service called Musicbed. They have by far my favorite library of chill, royalty-free hip-hop tracks and other beats, and I'll download the one that actually makes the most sense for my video into my Files app. Then I'll simply import that track into LumaFusion. From here I'll adjust all the audio levels of my voiceover and the royalty-free music, make it all blend seamlessly with the video, and we good. It sounds great, it looks great. Finally, let's add in that outro, as well as the Made in Toronto final outro, and now, the fun part. Exporting. Okay, so actually rendering this clip took about the same or less time on average than my MacBook normally would for a video of this length in 4K. That's pretty impressive. It also makes me quite excited about the performance gains we may be seeing when the Mac switches over to Apple Silicon later this year. Now, since the video is complete, I'll watch it one more time, and then upload it straight to YouTube. Okay, so everything you've seen so far and will continue to see throughout this video has been edited and produced completely on the iPad Pro. It's actually my first time ever making a full YouTube video on the iPad, and I couldn't be more impressed. The iPad not only was easy to use for this project, but it also in some ways was a moderately better experience than using a full computer. I know I was at home for the whole creation process of this video, but the fact that the iPad is so lightweight, thin, and portable, and has solid battery life, I could have made this whole thing at a park, coffee shop, wherever, and not have to really worry about carrying a huge, heavy computer, or worry about battery life all the time. The final question though, will I ditch my laptop completely and switch 100% to the iPad? Well, probably not, no. Because laptops, while I don't really prefer the experience versus an iPad, they still do some things better. There's more storage available, better display support, and simply the fact that there are no alternatives to some pieces of desktop software on the iPad. And another point, doing all these tasks on the iPad versus a regular computer, I'm definitely quite a bit slower on the iPad, as I'm new to all of this software. It's gonna take some learning and some practice to get more efficient, but for now, it takes a while. But simply put, and as I mentioned, I definitely prefer the iPad Pro over a more traditional computer experience. And knowing that I can actually edit full videos and thumbnails and do these kind of things on the iPad, you bet I'll continue using it and even use it even more than I already currently do. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with plenty of classes about all the creative things you've wanted to learn. From photography to design, animation, cooking, marketing, video editing, and so much more, it's all on Skillshare. And taught by creative pros who are ready to help you fuel your creativity, curiosity, and your career. The classes are engaging, entertaining, and filled with real projects to help you practice your skills while learning. There are plenty of incredible classes and even iPad-focused classes like this one, iPad Illustration. Robert discusses the essentials of line drawing with the iPad and pencil. It's great. The first 1,000 people who join with my link in the description get a two-month free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity today. And after your trial, it's less than $10 a month with the annual subscription. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. And that's it. So what do you think of using an iPad as your main sole computer? Could you do it? Do you currently do it? Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it. 
subscribe, and thank you for watching.